my new nephew, my blood nephew, my husband, my son. I have three grandchildren in here. My daughter-in-law is here. We're a family and we work together as a family. And when I look, when, when I was listening to everybody, I thought to myself, my message was going to be, first of all, to say thank you, to say wopi la panka, to tell you all from the bottom of my heart, from their hearts, to, to say thank you, because that's what we do in our tradition. The very last speaker says thank you. But what I wanted to say was that I looked at these little girls here, and I thought to myself, they're going to be grandmas. They're going to be grandmas someday. And in our culture, in the Lakota culture, we prepare them when they have the coming of age ceremony. They're being prepared to be grandmothers. And they're being prepared to honor who they are as women. And as women, nationwide, you know, women have a lot of power. And it's spiritual power. It's a different kind of power. I want to share a story with you about water. And I shared it with a couple of you already. But the, um, I was visiting with one of my elders back on the Pine Ridge Reservation. And she said, do you know that water is a woman? She said, everything in our universe is male and female. We have male sage, we have female sage. We have medicines that are male, we have medicines that are female. And all life forms are either male or female. And she said, water is a woman. And she said, do you know how I know that? And I said, no. She said, I was fasting. She said, I was sitting on the hill and I was fasting and I was praying. And all of a sudden, she said, I heard the most beautiful voice, this song, but it was coming from kind of far away. So she said she got up out of her altar and she followed that sound and it took her down a hill and she said there was a stream down there and as she got closer, the song got louder and clearer. And she went and she stood by the water and it was the water singing and it was a woman singing, the most beautiful song. So she said, water is so sacred, and that's why as women, we, we, when we carry our children, they're in water. It's water that sustains them in the womb. And she said that we have a responsibility, and that's what I wanted to share, that each one of us has a responsibility to life. Because we're all sitting here as men and women, different colors, however, we're all spirit. We're all spirit. And we have a responsibility to keep our people alive. And we have a responsibility to keep our waterways clean. We have a responsibility to speak up when somebody is violating the water. Because the other thing she said was that the way we treat the women in our country is the way we treat the water because water is woman. So if women are being abused, water is being abused. So if we can do it the other way around, come down this country and heal the waters, we're going to heal our women. We're going to heal our rela relationship because we need that water to grow our food. We get our rains you know, we want our rain to be clean. We don't want it to be poisoned. I went to my son's home up in the northeastern Montana, and the water in the toilet was all yellow. Everything was yellow, and they um, have to buy their drinking water. And <clears throat> my nephew talked about up in Fort Berthold how how they can turn on the tap and put a lighter to it and, it and it flames because there's methane. Methane leaches 
down into the brown water. And that really, really hurt, really hurt me because I thought, our tribes should be putting water at the top. It's a priority. If you look at your children, do you want them drinking that? They're not going to live. We're, we're going to be a dying nation. We're in a crisis. We are in a crisis to make sure we have clean water, clean land, clean air. And right now, it seems like this business of fracking, oil development, it's, it's ruining those gifts that our grandmother earth gave us. Our, our mother earth and our grandmother earth blessed us with medicines, with plants to stay alive, food, water, and so that's why we're all here. We're all here, but it's not going to last very long if we don't do anything. So I wanted to just interject that and to let you know that it's because of our love for one another. It's because of our love for those children, those little girls. They're going to be mothers. They're going to be grandmothers. They're going to bring children into the world. My grandson's sitting up sleeping somehow. I'm not sure <laughs> how he's doing that, but um, he's going to be a man. And, you know, it, it changes. Life changes. But we need to go back to our simple way. My grandson hunts. He had, we still have the ability to hunt and to still eat wild game. My granddaughters, when he brings the deer back, my granddaughters take care of the meat. They cut it up, they package it, and it's just something that they know, and it's for survival. I wouldn't worry about my my um, grandchildren at this point because they, they've learned to survive off the land. My son never went to school. He went to third grade. I taught him at home in the mornings. In the afternoons, my husband taught him hunting, how to live off the land, taught him how to be a mechanic, how to weld for preparing for this time. I don't have anything against education. It was just I seen my boy was different. 